Okay, welcome friends. Um, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous, wonderful day. I'm excited to do some yoga with you. So let's get started in a cross-legged position, or if you want to stay uh, on your knees, you could also take hero's pose. Go ahead and scooch onto the front edge of the sit bones so we can root. And then from that root, just press your hands into your thighs. Lengthen the spine up nice and tall. Give the shoulder heads a little roll out down away from the ears on the back and then relax the weight of your arms and close your eyes. Take a big exhale, just release all the way to empty. And then slowly inhale for three, two, one, and pause. Breathe in for another three, two, one, and pause. And a final three, two, one, Hold your breath, relax, and then just a nice sigh, exhale, let it go. Get down to the bottom of the breath. And now breathe into your low belly and your low back, start to carve out space. Carve that out into your mid-abdomen and your mid-back, and then fill all the way into your chest, all the way to your shoulders. Once you've got the full breath, hold on to it and relax. Try sipping in a little more air. And now exhale as if you were quieting someone. Shh. Take it all the way down to empty. And then inhale through the nose slow and deep like you're sipping the air in through a straw. Just filling from the bottom to the top. Use the muscles in the back of the throat you just were using for that shh sound. And then on your exhale, release out the nose like you're fogging up a mirror using those same muscles in the back of the throat. And as we move into this breathing technique, this ujjayi breath, the breath of victory, we just give our mind the task of focusing on this breathing, of that being our anchor right now. And as any waves come and roll by, whether they're gentle waves or whether they're larger waves, we've got that breath that's right there at the center, tethering us. So as you allow the breath to be your guide for your practice, then you can just take what works for me and leave the rest behind. Focusing on those nice deep inhales and those nice long exhales. With your eyes still closed, just take a few inhales where you're sweeping the arms out wide and tall. And exhales where you're drawing the hands together, bringing down into your heart center. And the next time that your hands come down into your heart center, just bring your eyes open to a soft gaze up front. Relax the arms at your side and lengthen the legs out in front of you and start to stretch out through your legs. So just rolling out through your ankles or pumping through your thighs or your knees. Leave your right leg extended, grab your left leg and start to cradle your left leg in towards your body. Rather than curling and collapsing through your spine, lift up nice and tall through your back. Check back in with the breathing. And then plant your left foot to the outside of your right thigh. Leave the right leg extended or bend your right knee so the heels to the outside of your left sit bone. And then we're going to start to twist over to the left. So wrap your right arm or bring your elbow outside of the knee. Left hand back behind you. Take an inhale just to reach back up tall through your spine. Roll your shoulder heads out. And on your exhale, twist from center and send the gaze back across your shoulder. You can close the eyes or just keep a soft gaze. But let those full rounds of breath come in and do their work in the pose. Bringing the inhale in past the twist, filling all the way up, and then taking that space on your exhale and getting to release deeper into your twist.
Okay, and then one of my favorite neck stretches, just tilt your right ear forward to your right shoulder, lengthen out the left side of your neck, and explore lifting your chin up to get to the front edge of your neck or to lower the chin to get to the back edge of the neck. Nice. Inhale, reach your head up nice and tall. Gaze is over to the left. On the exhale, just twist one more time all the way down to empty. Unwind, bring it back forward. Uncross the legs, stretching back out in front of you. Give a little roll out through your ankles, maybe move through your knees. And then we'll keep that left leg extended and start to cradle through the right leg. And as you're cradling, just check in with your spine. You can totally do this with like, your arms fully extended, or you can go in closer, get in with your elbows or with your forearms. And when you're ready for it, just plant that right foot outside of the left thigh. Left leg stays extended, or bend the knees so the heels to the outside of the right sit bone. Once you're feeling settled, just wrap your left arm outside of the right leg or elbow outside of the knee. Right hand is behind. Inhale, lengthen up tall. And then on that exhale, twist from center and send the gaze back across the shoulder. Feel free to close your eyes if you want. And I love, we have carved time out today to focus just on breathing. And that is such a gift to slow time for a little bit down to your inhaling and your exhaling. To get into the right side of your neck, start to tilt your left ear forward to your left shoulder, lengthen out the side of the head, and feel free to start to explore the edges of the neck, letting the chin lift up or come down. Next inhale, just lengthen your head up, gaze is over to the right wall, and on the exhale, twist from center and take that gaze all the way back across your shoulder. Awesome, as you come out of it, extend the legs out for a moment, just stretching through them, and then we're gonna come into our cobbler's pose, letting the bottoms of the feet come together, knees out wide. Scooch to the front edge of those sit bones, so walking the, the, them back, and then grab onto the shins, lift up tall, deep breath in, and on that exhale, take that length and start to fold. Gaze can come down as the crown of the head extends forward. Hands to your feet, around your toes or to the mat. Elbows just hanging out in space or coming to the insides of the legs, resting or pressing downwards. You could even hook the elbow slightly to the front of the shin and give a little pull back into the shin, helping to get that spine forward and out. And again, that idea that the, the breath is guiding, right? The breath is leading the way here, helping you to get deeper into the stretch, but also staying in that pocket of not too much, not too little. Finding a nice balanced level of sensation.
nice. Take a couple more deep rounds of breath. And then just get down to the end of the breath that you're on. Exhale completely and start to lift your spine up in space. Extend those legs out for a moment. And then we're going to make our way forward into our tabletop. Awesome. Just get into your cat cow right away. So letting the belly drop, tailbone lift, chest lift when you're hitting cow. And then on the cat, arching through the spine, so letting that mid-back lift up tall as the tailbone drops and the head relaxes. Maybe rocking a little forwards and backwards through those shapes or pressing out to the sides. Letting the movement of your body follow the movement of the breath. Hit a neutral flat back, hands and knees, and then just turn the inside of the right wrist forward, palm down, thumb points to the right, fingers are back. You could just give little circles, side to side, back or forth motions, or you could lean back and peel your hand off the mat back to your fingertips, and then roll it back forward till the heel of the palm presses back down. And so we're looking to stretch out not only the wrist here, the forearm, but also the entire circle of the palm, even into your fingers. Let the back of the hand come down. So the, the essentially the front of your wrist turns forward, back of the hand is down, thumb points to the inside, and just give a little massage to it. And then take your knees out just a little bit wider than your hips. Leave your left hand under your shoulder and reach your right arm up in space and roll your right wrist out. Maybe at times you're closing the fist or at times opening and spreading through the fingers. You're ready for thread the needle. So an inhale just opens you up and then the exhale dives that right arm underneath the left. Reach over to the left side of the room and lower the side of the head and the arm down. So as your right arm is reaching out to the left, your shoulder can be pulling back over to the right wall, so kind of stretching that arm out in two different directions. And then your left hand or forearm is either resting or I recommend giving a little press away from the body through the right hand or forearm, so it's pressing you back into your shoulder. Or if you prefer, you could tuck the back of the right hand behind you to the outside. Rather, you could tuck the back of the left hand behind you to the outside of that right hip. So that left hand resting or pressing at the side. And just steady on with that breathing. Okay, so bring the left hand down under your shoulder, press into it, inhale to reach your right arm up tall, twist open, and as you exhale, come down into your tabletop. And let's focus on that left arm. So starting with the hand, turning the inside of that left wrist forward, palm down, 
thumb to the outside and maybe leaning back and peeling the hand back off the mat and rolling forward or giving the side to side, the back and forth or those circles. Right on, take the back of the left hand down to the ground, point the, uh, the back of the wrist forward, thumb to the inside. And then the knees out again, just a little bit wider than your hips at that tabletop, right hands under your shoulder, reach the left arm up tall in space, give a nice roll out through your wrist. And again, you can make a fist at times or open and roll through your fingers, kind of alternate between those. For the thread the needle, just inhale to open and then exhale, dive the left arm underneath the right. Bring the shoulder and the outside of the head down to the ground so the gaze is over to the right. And then that right hand or forearm anywhere at your side resting or pressing or bringing the back of the right hand to the outside of the left hip, tucking it kind of back behind you in space. And that same cue as your left arm is reaching out to the right wall, you could feel your left shoulder pulling a little bit back away towards the left wall. Nice, Haley. Stay with that breath. You got it. Bring that right hand to press into the ground. Inhale, extend your left arm up tall in space. Breathe in. And on the exhale, come down into our tabletop. Step back into a plank position. Maybe have a little tiny back and forth rock as you spread out through your fingers. Get into the circle of your palm. Make sure those elbows aren't locked. A little micro bend. Tone those biceps in like you're holding a beach ball between your arms. Get strong through your core, find a little length through the low back. And then on your toes or coming down to your knees and crossing your ankles, just some slow motion push-ups. So exhales that bring you halfway down, leading forward with your sternum. And then inhales that bring you back up to the top of the plank. And whether you're on your knees or on your toes, we want to avoid bending the hips. So you want to keep that straight line. You're welcome on this last one to come in and hold Chaturanga Dandasana. So that's where your elbows are bent and you're just hovered off of the ground. And you're staying with that breathing. And when you're ready, friends, we lower to the ground. Make sure your hips can comfortably press to the floor. And we're just going to set up low cobra. So slide the palms a little bit lower. Elbows in the space. Squeeze the shoulder blades in towards one another and then just lift the chest up off the ground. Find that length through the back of your neck. And one of the keys here, right, is that this is a lift, not necessarily a press through the arms. The arms are there more just kind of for support. We're really getting into those snake muscles of the body, into our core, into our back muscles. Lift the thighs, fly the arms back. So take our Bhujangasana low cobra into Salabhasana, into our locust pose. Add just the slightest bend to your elbows, lifting up nice Marriott and toning those shoulder blades in towards one another as you get that length through the back of the neck.
Excellent. And then lower down and make your way to down dog. So that could be through plank or through tabletop. Should feel really nice to stretch the spine out in down dog after that work on your belly. Feel free just to slowly warm up the back of your legs, letting one heel pull to the ground as opposite knee bends. And then if you're thinking about it like from your hands up, the circle of your palm flat to the ground, the hands at shoulder's distance, you're spread into your fingers. And then as you're pressing into the ground, those biceps want to take that hug into center line. It's the same thing that would happen if you were upstanding and you were like pressing into a wall or pressing into something. You would feel your core and your arms engage and your biceps would tone into center line. In down dog, the weight of the head is released, the gaze is behind you. Bend both of your knees a bit and reach the hips back up as far as they go. So this is the full length of your spine in place. And then keep that length in your spine in place as you now take that bend out of your knees and let the heels pull down towards the ground back behind you. Deep breath in. On that next exhale, bend the knees and you can step or take that light hop up to the forward fold at the top of your mat. Inhale halfway up, so Ardha Uttanasana, press into the shins, bend the knees a little bit, tone the shoulder blades in, gaze down, crown of the head, reaching forward, nice and strong. And then on an exhale, take that length and fold it forward. And feel free to do a rag doll or just to relax the weight of the arms. Rag doll is opposite hand, gripping the outside of opposite elbow or bicep as the weight of the head releases. Swaying slowly side to side or rocking back and forth. And giving any of the movement like little nod yes or nod no through your head just to relax the weight of the head. Release the arms, slow motion vertebrae by vertebrae, wind up as your head lifts up, inhale to reach your arms tall in space, breathe in mountain, and then hands to your heart center on the exhale. So I usually practice with my feet just a hip bone distance, but you're welcome to do standing with your toes together in space between your heels. Inhale, reach back up in space, interlace the pointer fingers into a steeple, and on your exhale, you're going to arch to the right as the hips shift to the left. So your uh, arms are plugging back in towards the body. Biceps are pulling back to tone the ears. And then we're creating that big stretch through the outer left side body, hugging into that inner right side body. Nice, Patty. Inhale, reach back up tall in space. Breathe in. And on your exhale, just switch that out. So press to the ground, shift the hips over to the right, and then arch to the left. And it's interesting to think a thing to think about where you're thinking about extending and reaching through your fingers, but you're also thinking about plugging back in the opposite way through your arms in towards your body. As you inhale and extend back up in space, on that exhale, we're going to come down into chair. Awesome. So finding that squat. And then one of our themes today, we kind of already hit this from our low cobra and our salabhasana is going to be what I'm going to call a tuck. And what I'm referring to is when a skier tucks down a mountain. So you're kind of already in that shape with your legs if you were skiing and going straight down the mountain. For the tuck, we're going to drop a little bit lower through the spine and send it out. And you don't necessarily want your gaze straight down, because I was thinking about it. If you were tucking down a mountain and your gaze was straight down, you'd probably crash. So we bring the gaze and the chest up a little bit, and that's similar to right with our low cobra and our salabhasana. Um, this is also a flying chair, but I, even for me, this is a little bit lower than I would usually do flying chair. But if you'd like, now take the heels up off the ground, get onto the balls of the feet. And then in our squats, in our lunges, we're, we're thinking about the connection to the muscles in our legs. So through the lower legs, through the upper legs. And then your glute is a big muscle that when you engage, it pulls back away from your knee. So we find that when we're loading weight into our knees. Core for your low back, shoulders for your upper back. That's kind of your checklist. 
Perfect. We're going to warm up our one-legged balance. So right heel to the ground, inhale, arms and left knee lift up into one-legged mountain. And then just tree pose. So left foot grabs the, or rather your hand can grab onto the left ankle and then guide the heel to the inside of the thigh, the foot inside of the thigh with the toes above your knee, or you can place it to the inside of the calf with the toes below your knee, hands to heart center or extending up in space. Awesome. And just focusing that gaze on something that's not moving. And then if you'd like to try, and you might fall right out of it, it usually happens for me, right? Just try to close your eyes. <laughs> right on. Okay, inhale the arms and bring that left knee with you up, one-legged mountain. And then we're going to come back into that chair, but with the tuck. So fly the arms back. And you can go ahead and lift your heels right away on this one. Okay, so with how deep you are in your chair, we're going to find regular chair dropping the heels and lifting the arms up. But you can probably keep pretty much the depth that you have with this chair. And you can always open your arms up wider when you're lifting them up in space if you're not feeling like your shoulders are quite getting that opening. Nice pressing. Okay, drop it into that tuck chair. So reach your arms back. That could be on an exhale. The heels are lifting. And then we're going to take our other side of that one-legged balance. So your left heel lowers, arms and the right knee are coming up in space. Nice. And then it's tree on this side. So right foot to the inside of your thigh or the inside of your calf. You could also do toes to the ground with the heel inside of your ankle. Find that spot that you're focusing your gaze on on the wall in front of you. Feel the foot and the leg pressing into one another. Take your hands to heart center or lift up. And then go ahead and if you'd like, try closing your eyes. Always a fun game, tree with the eyes closed. Cool, so inhale, they'll reach that leg up in space. And then just bring the foot to the ground, the hands to your heart center. From the top of that diving board, inhale to reach up tall, breathe in mountain. And on the exhale, hinge out from the hips and swan dive down into your forward fold. Inhale halfway up, Ardahutanasana. Plant the hands, come back to plank. You've always got the choice as I go up dog, down dog, to skip it and go directly to down dog or to replace that up dog with a low cobra. And if, if for any cues on upward facing dog, tops the feet and hands are what's touching the ground. You're lifting your body weight. It's, and it's not you're lifting your hips up. Your hips are down and forward. But we're suspending that body weight and toning those biceps in. And then tucking when you're ready and finding that down dog. Okay, reconnect with your down dog, get back into the shape, the strength, and the length. And then draw your right leg up into a three-legged down dog, pressing your heel to the wall back behind you. So your toes essentially are pointing down and maybe back, but the front of your right hip is pointing down and back. Nice, park your next exhale, bring your knee to your left elbow or tricep. Inhale, reach it back up tall in space. Exhale the knee to your right elbow or tricep. This is like a three-legged plank. Nice, Julia. Inhale, reach back up, three-legged down dog. And then the knee to your forehead, forehead to your knee. Inhale, reach back up, three-legged down dog. And then low lunge on the exhale. If the foot doesn't land right where you want it, just walk it up a little bit. Spin the knife edge of your left foot to the ground and find our warrior two. So windmilling that left arm back and that right arm forward. And as we come into this pose that is exactly like if you were riding a surfboard, we drop the center of gravity low on the surfboard to balance. We get a grip down into the surfboard, so a press down through your legs. At the same time as you're pressing down and out, there's also the hug back in, gripping it. And then tall through your body, reaching out through your arms. Nice Coco, breathe in. And on the exhale, just hinge forward. Take your extended side angle pose. So right forearm to your right thigh. You can do left arm straight up, or you can pull the left arm on a diagonal from your back left leg. If your back left hip lifted up in space, 
lower that back left hip down on level with the right. And then for today, I want you to start to hover your right forearm just away from your right thigh, but keep the shape of extended side angle pose. And it might be easier if your arm is on the diagonal to reach your arm straight up in space with that hover. Nice cat. Okay, inhale into a star. So all 10 toes face the left wall. Legs are out wide. Reach your arms out. And as you exhale, a wide-legged squat. So now you're going to bring your heels in a little closer underneath your knees. Your feet are out at 45, hands to your thighs. Maybe shift your, your hips a little bit side to side just to get settled into that shape. And then pressing into your thighs, inhale your spine up nice and tall. And on your exhale, you're going to twist to the front of the room, pressing off of that back uh, left thigh. So I'm a mirror for you, so you're twisting towards me. And a really nice twist for that upper spine where you can get in with your arms. Okay, inhale to reach back up in space. We're going to switch that out. So on your exhale, twist to the back of the room. So press off your front right thigh. And then come back into your star. Inhale to reach your arms up tall. Legs are wide. And as you exhale, swan dive down into a forward fold. Inhale halfway up. Lengthen. And then refold on that exhale. And you're welcome to start to pull against something. It could be that your hands are like reaching back behind you and they're pulling your mat or in front of you and pulling the floor. Or the peace on fingers are pulling the inside of the big toes or even wrapped all the way around the big toes. Or the outside of your edges of your feet are great or the outside edges of your ankles or your shins are great too. And if you've ever had any experience at all with any sort of rock climbing, right, the idea is that you get to get a hold and you get to pull against that hold, right, you, especially when you're using your upper body and your arms, and that's essentially for the next few rounds of breath, what we're doing here is we're finding something that we can grip and gently pull against. One of the things with wide-legged forward folds versus our regular forward folds is your legs have to do a little bit more work here, a little more activity, pressing down to the ground as your hips pull back up tall in space. Nice, Lisa. Last couple rounds of breath. So as you get down to the end of your breath, we're just going to walk up into a low lunge position. Both hands frame your right foot, ball of the left foot to the ground behind you. Okay, and then that tuck position that we did in chair, we're going to find the same thing here from our lunge. So your chest is kind of off of your thigh just by about like six, seven inches. You're flying your arms back in space, strong through your legs. And then again, you kind of want to be looking a little bit out in front of you. It's not like you're looking directly in front of you. It's more down and out, but just watching where you're going here. And then with those arms, as those fingers are reaching back in space, triceps are just bending a little bit and lifting up. Nice, Sharsty. And on an inhale, find your regular high crescent lunge, and, but keep that depth that you just created. So it, more than likely, you kind of lift back up out of it, and then you can kind of settle back into it a little bit. Feel those thighs getting to work together to pull into center line, and then that press, that pull up through your glute, and again, core for your low back, and then shoulders for your upper spine. On an exhale, we're going to return to that tuck lunge, reaching your arms back. Okay, and then we're going to one-legged mountain. The right leg is the base, inhaling arms and left knee up tall in space. Excellent. So dock costs in an airplane is what we're going to play with with our one-legged balance from here. And a side profile of it, it's similar to Warrior Three, but we're going to keep a lot of the shape we've been working with. So we send that left leg back, arms go back, and chest is forward. So, so right, same shape we've been working with. Nice, Marriott. And if you fall out of it, no worries. Just try again. OK, 
Okay, inhale, reach back up tall, bring the arms, bring that left knee. And as you exhale, just bring the foot to the ground, relax your arms, give that right leg a little bit of a release. All right. Top of the diving board. Inhale to reach up tall, breathe into mountain. Exhale, hinge out from the hips and take your swan dive down into your forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Plant the hands, and then as you come to plank your choice, you can go uh, up dog, down dog, or you can skip it, or low cobra. Staying with your breathing. Find that down dog when you're ready. And then left leg is pulling up and back to a three-legged down dog. Pressing that heel up in space, so you kind of flexion, that dorsal flexion through your foot. Your toes are kind of pointing down and back a little bit. Nice, Julia. When you're ready, bring that knee on an exhale to your right elbow or tricep three-legged plank. Inhale to reach your left leg back up, three-legged down dog. And as you exhale, need a left elbow or tricep three-legged plank. Nice, Emma. Inhale, reach back up, three-legged down dog. And on your exhale, need a forehead, forehead to knee. One more three-legged down dog. Breathe in. And then step up to that low lunge. Walk your foot up if you didn't quite get it all the way up, and then spin the knife edge of your right foot to the ground, reach your right arm back, and then your left arm forward. And feeling the strength of both of your legs in our warrior two. Feeling that stretch we create with the shape, and then feeling that strength that we get into right away with it. Opening through those arms. On an exhale, just hinge forward. Left forearm to left thigh, extended side angle pose. Checking in if that back hip is tilting up above the le front left hip. See if you can pull it back down, but keep the shape. And again, what's going to help with that is we're going to start to hover that left forearm just away from the left thigh, but keep the shape of the body. Awesome, Kelsey. Okay, inhale to your star. We're facing over to the right wall. And on the exhale, come into your wide-legged squat, your hands to your thighs. So step the feet in a little closer. Again, feet are out at 45. And then we're going to hold our squat. So the hands will pull away from the thighs. You can start with hands into your heart center. Heels are underneath your knees. And then rather than your knees kind of collapsing in and down or your thighs going in and down, think about your thighs are opening up and back. Or another way to think about that is that you're spreading to all corners of your feet, all edges of your feet. Open your arms out to the front and back of the room with both palms open to the right wall. Bend your elbows just a little bit and tone those shoulder blades back in behind you. And if you'd like, the feet could come in a little closer as you lift the heels up off the ground on the balls of the feet. Right on, Lisa. Okay, tape your legs out wide. Breathe into your star. And on your exhale, hinge out from your hips and swan dive down into your forward fold. Awesome, friends. So you can grab another forward fold. If you'd like to work on crow, we're going to bring the feet in at hip bone distance. And then we're going to create a, a platform with our triceps and we're going to place the shin, the edge of the shin, up high into the middle of the tricep. So we start to lower the elbows to drop the triceps. And then we lift the hips up to lift the shins up. And before you're even balancing, you want to be able to press that shin bone onto the tricep. And then from there, it's that game of rocking forward, bringing the feet together, and holding nice and strong through the body. And if you feel more comfortable facing forward to the front of the room, awesome, you can do that. If you can keep facing sideways, if you've got the space for it. But one of the things with crow I often see is that people are, are kind of squeezing the inside of their leg into the tricep. And this is an actual balance, a stack, if you will, right, of the shin 
onto the tricep. So sometimes bending those elbows down and out, getting them super wide at the beginning, allows you to get that shin bone onto the tricep. Nice. Last couple rounds of breath in playtime or in crow or in our forward fold. Awesome, friends. Okay, if you're in crow, step out to that wide-legged forward fold facing to the right wall. Relax your head. We walk up into our low lunge, both hands framing the left foot, ball of the right foot to the ground behind us. And then extend your arms back into that tuck lunge. So you're pulling the chest just slightly away from your left thigh, arms extending back in space. Just like your low cobra, just like your salabhasana, your locust pose, you've got that gaze coming up and you're shining your heart forward. Okay, and then we're coming to high crescent lunge. Just inhale your arms up in space. Try to keep that bend in that knee that you created earlier. Toning thighs in towards one another, up nice and tall with the arms. Reinforcing that strength for your upper spine with your shoulders, for your lower spine with your core. Breathe into it, and as you exhale, do one more of those tuck lunges, sending the arms back. On an inhale, we come up to our one-legged mounts and bring in the arms and the right knee with you. Okay, perfect. And then, again, that airplane, this dakasana, you're sending your arms back in space. And then you're reaching your fingers back, your leg back, and your chest is shining up. So similar to warrior three, but warrior three, your gaze would be down. This one, you're looking forward in space like you would be in low cobra. More down and out, right? Shining that heart forward. Nice, Julia. When you're ready, inhale to reach back up, one-legged mountain. And on the exhale, just bring the foot to the ground. Relax your arms. Give your left leg a little bit of a shake out, a little bit of a release. Okay. Back to the top of our diving board. We'll do a flow, inhaling to reach up into mountain, Tadasana. Exhaling to swan dive into forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Plant the hands, come back to Palakasana, to our plank. Stay there or exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog, Urdhva Mukhashvanasana. Exhale, down dog, Adho Mukhashvanasana. We meet in child's pose, friends. Malasana, knees out wide to the edges of the mat. Tops of the feet to the ground, big toes together, sit bones back to your heels and letting the forehead completely relax to the ground with those arms out in front of you or tucked at your sides. Pull up to your tabletop. Bring one of your hips to the ground. Bring your legs forward. Come onto your back and take your legs straight up in space. 
grab onto your hamstrings, and then lift so you've got your head and shoulders up off the ground and your gaze is forward. And then once you got your head and shoulders up off the ground and your gaze is forward, start to extend the arms like they're reaching towards your toes. If your neck needs support, just take the right hand back behind the base of the skull with the elbow out wide. Keep breathing. And then we'll let the left leg come halfway down and reach the arms out to the right on the outside of the right leg. Arms back up, head up. You could take the left hand back behind the, the neck if you want a little support. Right hand to the diagonal, and then that little twist opening to the left, so arms on the outside of your left leg. And then we'll find a reclined cobbler's pose just as a rest, bringing the bottoms of the feet together, letting the knees relax out wide. That diamond shape in the legs and then relaxing the head and the arms where it feels good to you. Find those last couple rounds of breath here. And then interlacing the hands behind the base of the skull. Lift the head and shoulders off the ground and take both of your legs out this time to a diagonal. Feel your low back pressed and rooted into the ground. Feet together, finding your breathing. Bend through the right knee and twist your left elbow in towards the right knee. Re-extend the legs back to center. You're doing great. Bend through your left knee and twist that right elbow in towards your left knee. Awesome. Relax and take a full morning stretch. So open all the way up through your abdominal wall, just relaxing the arms back behind you with the legs out in front of you. You can give a little roll out through your ankles or through your wrists. Bring your knees in towards you, grab onto your hamstrings, and just start a slow motion rock back and forth the length of your spine that brings you from the base of the skull up into boat pose and then back. And then catch yourself up in your boat pose, balancing those feet up off the ground, extending up through your spine. Crossing through the ankles, take the outside of the left forearm to press to the outside of the right thigh and just take that twist open to the side of the room. And then in our boat pose, just always checking back in with that length through your spine. Mm -hmm. 
Right on, come back to center, uncross the legs. Relax through the face. Cross your ankles, outside of that right forearm, outside of your left thigh. Opening the arms up, lifting back and up through the chest. Nice, Charsty, finding that breathing. Come back to center, uncross the legs. Last couple rounds of breath. Okay, and then you can bring it all the way forward, and we're going to lower down for our Sphinx pose. So your hips need to comfortably be able to press into the ground. Tops of the feet root, press into those forearms, lift up through your chest. Keep the head just looking kind of forward and down, or you can start to add a twist, taking your gaze to the left. If you're over to the left, you start to twist over to the right. Nice deep inhales, nice long exhales, you got it. If your head is to the right, come back to center, leave upright or let it come forward and down and maybe add a little side-to-side -side movement with your chin. And then we'll lay out at the beach, relaxing the head and the arms. You can bend the knees and pick the feet up in space and start to circle out your ankles, roll out your knees. Stay in beach pose, or we've got a nice move into our Danyarasana bow pose. So pulling those heels in towards the sit bones, taking the hands back to the tops of the feet. Let the thighs stay connected to the ground as you kick the legs back, pulling the arms taut and lifting your chest up like low cobra, and then start to let the thighs lift up off the ground. So that full connection with the arms lengthened and the pull back in and that length to the back of your neck. Check in with your breathing when we pop up into this, right? So keep those inhales, those exhales flowing. We'll lower it down, press it to plank, and send it to down dog. You can also do that tabletop move back into your down dog. On an inhale, just reach your right leg up tall in space, breathe in, and as you exhale, you can open the hip and bend the knee. So you point the knee upwards inside of your hip points to the right, and then the heel is pulling in towards your sit bone, coming towards the sit bone. Watch that we're not getting a super deep twist through the shoulders, and that your left heel isn't twisting to the left, it's pointing back behind you. Breathe in here, and when you're ready, cross the shin up to the top of your mat, make the seven shape of pigeon with your legs. You could also go onto your back into reclined pigeon. So for our upward facing pigeon, our Raja Kapatasana, the left foot walks back a little bit directly behind us. We've got that right knee wide in space and then fingertips can stay to the ground or you could bring hands to your hips or you could fly arms backwards in space, letting the knuckles extend back. If we wanted to, you could also press your right fist down and then bend that left knee and start to connect and grab that left, uh, that, that left foot with your left hand. Right hand could stay down from there. And this is also a bind, right? Your, your foot is kicking back and your arm's going taut. Or you could also look to extend that arm up in space. But listen to your body, right?
And then from that upward facing pigeon, you can lower, unwind, and bring it down onto your forearms and then relax the head down into your hands to the ground or to a block. Right knee is out nice and wide. You could have the top of the right foot to the ground or the side of the right foot to the ground, whatever works better for your ankle. And then the top of your left leg is pointing straight to the ground, so top of your thigh, top of your shin, and your foot. So we shouldn't, ha we shouldn't feel too deep of a twist through our hips to the left or to the right. Press back up to your hands. We're going to return to that three-legged down dog and stretch the right leg out up in space. You can extend through the leg or pump through the knee or just find that full down dog. Right foot to the ground, full downward facing dog. Inhale to reach that left leg back up in space, three-legged down dog, and then open the hip and bend the knee. So again, knee points up. As the knee bends, your heel comes towards your sit bones. And then you're pointing the inside of your left hip to the left. We're watching, we're not twisting super deep in the shoulders, we're strong there. And that the right heel is not pointing to the right, it's going straight back in space. On an exhale, take that left leg and cross up to the top of your mat. Find that seven shape with your legs. And then walk your right foot back a little bit. You could also go onto your back into reclined pigeon. Right on. And then whether the fingertips stay to the ground or we start to feel that pull down and in and we're floating up, we've got these options. We could keep hands, you know, rooted down to your hips. You could interlace at the knuckles and extend back in space. Left fist could press to the ground. We bend the right knee and then you're just making this nice bind between your right uh, hand and your right foot. And then a note on that bind, you're not on the kneecap of the right leg. You're on the soft tissue right at the end of the thigh. If you're in that bind, you could always play with the left arm extending or just keep that left hand rooted down to leg or hip. And then as you let go of all this, we start to get into that more humble pigeon, letting the elbows come down. And then the head come down to the hands or to the ground or to your block. Again, top of the left foot or the side of the left foot connecting to the ground. Watching that we're not twisting to the left or to the right with the hips. You've got the top of the right thigh pointing down, the shin pointing down. And letting those rounds of breath just relax through the upper body here while you get into that big stretch in the lower body.
press into your hands, lift up through your spine. If you're on your back and reclined pigeon, you can just let go of it and maybe take a full morning stretch. For those of us who are in that half pigeon, just reach your left leg back up. Add a little movement into your left leg. Bring the blood flow back in. And then we're going to come down into our down dog and make our way onto our backs. Just allowing those knees to dry in. Give that little side to side rock. Awesome, friends. Extend your right leg flat out in front of you and reach your left leg straight up and give a little roll out through your ankle. And then for a reclined spinal twist, you can either bend your left knee in towards the body or keep that left leg extended as you roll onto the outside edge of the right hip, reaching the leg over towards the right wall and opening your left arm to the left. My foot ends up hovered just off the ground by like five inches here. Some of you, your legs will come, you know, your foot will relax all the way to the ground. And then if you're, you know, with the leg extended, your right hand is going anywhere on the outside of the leg all the way up for some, you'll grab onto the, you know, outside edge of the foot or to the toes. Awesome. Roll on to your back. Take that left leg flat out in front of you. Reach your right leg straight up in space. Just give your right ankle a little bit of a roll out. You can grab onto the back of the leg. And then you can either bend the knee in towards the body as you go into this spinal twist or simply just keep the leg extended but roll onto the outside edge of the left hip. Your foot is kind of pressing over towards that left wall like you could press the heel into the wall. Right arm reaches to the right and the gaze goes to the right. And just depending on you know, where the body's flexibility is at, you might have that foot lifted slightly up off of the ground if it's extended. And you can be anywhere on the outside of the thigh, calf, or all the way up to the foot. Find that breathing. As you roll onto your back, we can take happy baby, or you could just bring the knees to your chest. So peace on fingers to your big toes or the outside edges of the feet, bending the knees out nice and wide. Bottoms of the feet pointing to the sky, just giving that little side to side rock with the weight of the head relax. And then we'll move into our final resting pose, our corpse posture, Shavasana. Letting those legs just extend out in front of you. And of course, if you need to add any layers of clothing on just to keep yourself warm, or if you have any props that you want to use, get set up.
when you're settled into it and you feel the weight of the legs just relax, the feet relaxed, you can let the weight of the arms just release and relax, the hands heavy to the ground. Weight of the head to the floor, just relaxing the eyes. And this is a practice in stillness, and it's not the awkward, like, clenched stillness waiting for it to pass. This is just that relaxed, blissful stillness where we just get to float for a little bit in space. Start to wiggle out your fingers and your toes. Extend your arm to the sky or back behind you and give a roll out through your ankles and through your wrists. And then roll the weight of your body onto your side into a fetal position. Come up to a cross-legged position. (laughs) 
get nice and rooted into the front edge of those sit bones so you can build that length up through your spine. Roll your shoulder heads out. And then let the weight of the body just relax into this structure. And as we sit back up, we rise out of that, you know, Shavasana. We are grounded and we are rooted, but we are aware and ready. So we're nice and connected on the inner to sit and get to be there for the outer. Have a beautiful rest of the evening. The light in me greets the light in you. Namaste.